What's going on, Jerome's? Tomorrow, tomorrow, and the Minnesota Fighting Vikings take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, and, well, sorry, the stupid Eagles in the last stupid preseason game. Uh, Vikings, yeah. I mean, they, the two franchises are intertwined. You know, last year when the Vikings literally just fumbled the game away and just gave it away, give it away, give it away now, right? Kind of, kind, of, kind of rough. Vikings had a chance to make a statement win on the road. Monday Night Football, but that d- didn't, didn't happen. And, of course, uh, the Winfield, the, the game where basically Antoine Winfield Jr. won the game by himself, like Tuesday Night Football. It's good times. And that was the only, uh, that was the only game in Philly that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but screw the Eagles, screw the fans, screw everything. But uh, Vikings gonna look good. A couple guys trying to make the rooster, man. It's gonna be a good time. Also, a good time is join us, join us, join us uh, uh, tomorrow at noon. Uh, Eagles game will be streaming. Uh, do a little Q's and A's and talking junk, but really um, pr- probably just going off on random tangents and uh, random trivia, random historical things. It's kind of what we do here. Also, uh, what we do is uh, donating to Every Meal Twin Cities, a great charity here in the Twin Cities, helping fill in uh, some food insecurity gaps uh, with the local youth. Uh, we worked with them uh, during the draft. Uh, you guys crushed our, our fundraising goal then. Uh, you crushed it now. So our initial goal was 1509. Uh, we... Uh, we're currently at around 1400 so we're going to make that an even 2K. Uh, JJ2K, Bay Bay. So all Venmo's Cash App Super Chats uh, donated uh, this month will go to Every Meal Twin Cities. Uh, so uh, got an extra week after the Eagles game. I, I think we'll make it. Mm. Also, you can donate directly. Uh, the link is in the description. Uh, just shoot us an email. Uh, let us know, and then we'll add you to the pile, just like Brad Mahoney. Our guy, man, three hundo, three hundo, three bills uh, to every mill. You guys are the best. All right, also the best. So, uh, Kevin uh, Kevin McConnell uh, announced on Thursday that no starters will be playing against the Eagles as expected, and uh, Jaron Hall is going to be starting, followed by Matt Coral. Coral at quarterback. Uh, the Vikings did have a scrimmage-like practice on Thursday, and I mean the defense looked really good. I'm really hyped up for the defense. Uh, Darnold and the first team offense. Well, there's some nice moments. We'll, we'll take that. But, uh, again, I, I, I chalk up Darnold struggling at times against the first-team defense much more. I'd be like, hey, that Flores defense, baby. Let's go. Let's go, man. It's going to be fired up. Also, something's not fired up, so Kramer Strib. A uh, Vi- couple couple injuries. Uh, Vikings practicing today in a slight rain. Jordan Addison, who injured his ankle last week in Cleveland, uh, is out here working on a side field, so that's plus. Uh, he's got – you know, two weeks and change uh, to be able to heal up and try and get back out there for the opener on September 8th. Uh, we'll be monitoring that. Uh, Dwayne McBride joined him, uh, perhaps explain the quick signing of former Gophers running back Mo Ibrahim. Uh, McBride has a right knee wrap. So that's something that uh, to take note of coming out of that Cleveland game. Also, in, in like very poop ad news, Kramer again, Vikings Atira O line. Depth remains thin with Dalton Reisner remaining sideline and Diamond Dan Feeney uh, limited in practices. A rookie tackle, Walter Rouse, the six-round pick out of Stanford, took reps at right guard with the twos. Now, this is some. Of, this was something that Quasi had talked about when they drafted Rouse of him maybe kicking inside, but I, 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 I doubted at, that at the time because Rouse is a he. he, he he is a true blue tackle. Like if you're going to go down to central casting and pick out a body type, uh, a body frame for a tackle, he's a tackle, right? And I, I, I don't know if Rouse can play with the leverage needed to play inside, but who knows? Uh, but th- this is more out of necessity rather than by what you want to have happen. All right. So, uh, I mean, Reisner has been dinged up with this mystery injury here for a couple weeks now. So that, that could limit the Vikings options, uh, at right guard, uh, Ed Ingram might start by default. Uh, and Dan Feeney, uh, even though I do like Michael Jurgens, even though he's been up and down, certainly, uh, Feeney is supposed to be your swing, uh, backup in terms of both guards and center spots. So hopefully, uh, they can get both healed up by week one. Also, uh, in the preseason game, Justin Brigham Jefferson, obviously not playing, but uh, he he made his case to Kevin O'Connell, who's going to be mic'd up for the third quarter of the Eagles game. Uh, Jefferson was mic'd up week one, Harrison week two, and week three is going to be O'Connell uh, of letting letting Jefferson call some plays. Now, so, some of the other uh, offensive coaches are, are calling plays, Wes Phillips notably, uh, but you, you know, j- just let JJ ha- have a chance to call a play and like, oh baby, you know we're, we're we're going downtown Julie Brown. That's right, man. All right, uh, but it's fun too. Like, you know, like spring games 
uh, at major college football programs. Sometimes, uh, like uh, a fan or like a booster, will will be able to get down there and put on the headset and call in a play. Uh, you, you want to call something exotic and erotic. You don't want to just call like a all right forty four dive. Please get out of here, man. It's ridiculous. Oh, speaking of uh, awesome, well, no segue, but. Uh, uh, Mo Ibrahim, Gophers legendary running back, was signed. I uh, did a video on it yesterday. Also, uh, Chuck uh, Filiaga, uh, starting right guard for the Gophers last season, he was picked up. He had a cup of coffee with the Packers. Uh, Trey Knox, wave injured, and uh, Jacoby Francis has been waived as well. Uh, plus, great story. I, I love this man. So Josh Metellus. Uh, so Josh Metellus obviously has been a Swiss Army knife for the Brian Flores defense. You, you could also say like Flores coming in, changing the fortunes of Metellus, where he was a utility swing backup and a special teamer. Uh, but yeah, you know, he he wasn't the guy on defense that you can just really. You know, set your watch to, but uh, he's turned into a, a major part of this defense, and I, I love me some Josh Metellus, man. Uh, plus, so he was a 2026 round pick out of Michigan. Like, you know, late day three selections aren't guaranteed to make the team. Like, they get uh, cut, they get waived, they get put on the practice squad, they get let go all the time, right? So the fact that Metellus has clawed his way up, you know, got himself a mini extension last off season. Uh, I mean, it's a testament, man. And he's a leader, and I, I truly believe, like, hey. Yeah, Metellus, if he wants to get into coaching after this, like he would be a perfect head coach. Like uh, so many uh, people, like Har- Harrison, uh, Durante Jones, have talked about uh, Metellus' just knowledge and love for the game. So if he wants to be a coach, I think he'll be a coach. If he wants to be a senator or some or a CEO or something like that, he'll do that. Uh, Josh Metellus is very impressive, man. But uh, so. Long story longer, when he got drafted in 2020, so check the date on the bottom tweet, April 25th, 2020, uh, Josh Mattel has tweeted, I promise you that the Vikings just got a dog. So blessed. Hashtag skull. Uh, and then Mattel yesterday. Time flies, but 44 is still a dog. <laughs> I love it, man. One of those great stories work. Something I love, too, just seeing guys at the bottom of the roster work their way up, bootstrap, 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 and just get it on through uh, through merit and just carve out a role, car- car- carve out a career and a life for themselves. It's great, man. Mm. Uh, also, so Najee Thompson, a uh, little bit surprised. Uh, he was waived with injury designation uh, on Wednesday. Thursday, he cleared waivers, so he reverted to uh, Vikings season-ending injury reserve. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but – yeah, we talked about the options of when you revert to injured reserve as a wave injury designation. Like you, there could be an injury settlement and free agent, but it seems like Najee uh, is going to stay on IR and work to get back. Najee tweeted this out. Uh, At the end of the day, thank God I'll be back soon. This is just a pause in the journey. God is prepared for me. Uh, thank you all for the support. It means a lot. Much love and good luck to my brothers uh, out on the field this year. Number 36 out for now. So again, brothers on the field this year. I kind of resigned that he's going to be done for the season and so obviously preseason training camp there's no injury reports but uh it had been widely reported it was a knee injury uh with Najee and there's conflicting reports that he was close he wasn't close so but either way uh Najee remains in the fold here with the Vikings and then we'll, we'll see him uh next season now IR rules so the, the Lions had a proposal at the league meetings that passed that the two players uh from injured reserve uh from before as 53-man rosters are set, can return uh, during the season. And up to eight players can return off of injured reserve uh, in, during the season. Ten, uh, you get two more in the playoffs, so ten total uh, for the year. Uh, but here's the thing. So with Najee, with uh, you know, Trey Knox, uh, who was just waived uh, with injury uh, designation on Thursday, as well as J.J. McCarthy, they, they can't return because uh, the language of it is they have to designate that player uh, during the business day of final roster reduction. So that, that's on Tuesday by 3 p.m. Central Time. The only times on the matters uh, teams have to be down to 53-man rosters officially. Uh, so that day is when you can put the player down on IR, but with the designation that they can return during the season. Now, before this, it, it was a stupid song and dance where the player had to be on the final 53 and then wait a beat, usually about 24 hours. And then on Wednesday, uh, then they would be put down on injured reserve and then potentially coming back. And like te- teams knew that that was stupid because you know, just sort of uh, loopholing around the, the rules. So why not just write the loophole into the rules? Right. And also like this, 
Uh, I understand why they do it at, at 53 man cutdowns because it then it prevents teams from just IRing players earlier in training camp uh, and then just you know warehousing them uh, and then getting them back throughout the season. But uh, yeah, so I, I don't think that there's any Vikings right now that are candidates to do that. I mean, Hawkinson is still on the pup, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, also, we'll see. Minnesota State Fair kicked off yesterday. Uh, so I love the State Fair as a kid. I actually got lost at the State Fair as a kid. Apparently, it's very traumatic to uh, my loved ones, but uh, I don't know. I would just eat ice cream <laughs> as a rambunctious, like, holes, uh, maybe like five or six. Uh, but I don't know, sort of got out of it as like a young adult because, yeah, because you realize when you're an adult, like, you just want to get away from crowds. And then also, like, prices start pissing off about things. But then, you know, my kids came around, and they love the State Fair, so now I love the State Fair. Now, our strategy is obviously avoiding weekends uh, and also nights and afternoons. But we'll, we'll pick a weekday uh, during um, during the second week. Uh, well, er, so second week. Uh, but we'll go in the morning. We'll go bright and early. Uh, we'll head to St. Paul, like, 630. We'll get in the line, get, get the tickets right away, hit everything that we want. It's pretty empty, and we have a pretty set loop uh, of the places that we like, the kids like, uh, the wife and I like, and yeah, that we're out of there like 11.30 noon, just as it starts to get busy, and that's our, our fare uh, every single year. It seems to work out pretty good. Now, it's always about the new foods, but so I, I, I love me like the kebabs. Uh, from the from the bazaar, as well as uh, pretty much anything from the Union Monk Kitchen. It's fantastic. Uh, the, the the chef there is really really good. Uh, but also some of the new things. So deep fried halloumi. I love me some halloumi cheese. So that that's gonna be fantastic. Uh, deep fried ranch. Now, I've heard conflicting uh, reviews on, on this. Now the lines were obviously long on this, uh, but you know at, at Lulu's, um, you know o- over in the corner over by the, like the waffle place. But I mean. Some people like it. Some people think it's gross. Like, I'm intrigued, but also I'm not going to wait half an hour for it. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, but also the the Nordic waffles. So I remember when their first year was like, was it five, six years ago? Something like that. But it's fantastic. It's really good. Like, I, I look, that, that's our breakfast place. So we'll go to the Nordic waffle slash the, the, the Blue Barn, and you'll, we'll get some various breakfast things there. Uh, I always love me the... Uh, the the salmon and lox or you know the lox and cream cheese uh, waffle it's really fantastic lot, lots of green onions on there baby let's go also, uh, so now they have a Wrangler waffle burger and it has like a what a burger sauce on it so I don't know how that works with copyright but uh, also new vendors uh, they have oh Korean corn dogs uh, so I feel like ethnically I have to try it also uh, El Burrito Mercado this fantastic place here and the you know, the Quesa Quesa Berea uh, taquitos baby combining like three delicious amazing things it's gonna be great it's gonna be fantastic man so uh, again have some kids and you like to stay fair again it's basically where we're at hmm. uh but that's it happy friday you guys are the best you know what to do skull production value